What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am joined every Thursday, as always, by Dr. Jesse Morse, who is staying hydrated. It's good to stay hydrated, kids. Stay in school. Stay hydrated. Dr. Jesse Morse of the Fantasy Doctors. What's going on, Doc? How are you today? We're good. We're, 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 we're a little busy today, trying to stay up to date with patients and injuries. A bunch of uh, big-name guys maybe coming back this or sooner than we expect. Uh, we're going to discuss a couple of them today. Yeah, looking forward to it. Um, hopefully one of those guys is Tyree Kill. Not to foreshadow or anything. He was on the list, but I think we'll jump into him for a quick second because I know we've talked about him before. But let's start off with the quarterback position. Um, so Sam Darnold has been dealing with this mono thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't exactly know the timetable because you don't see a lot of professional athletes, at least from a fan's <laughs> perspective, deal with this too often, right? This is something that college kids go through. And I guess Darnold, yep. age-wise, he's still like in that. Technically college. similar, yeah. yeah. He could still be in college, technically. So um, he has mono, and this is something that obviously affects, like, your body, and it makes you feel weak, and it kind of makes right. you shut down before. I've never had it, but my sister's had it, and I've seen her just be, like, bedridden for weeks yep. at a time. So it's, it's a very serious thing, and I know I'm about to get about five. I shouldn't have brought up my sister in mono because I'm about to get 500 comments down below about it. But let's talk about Sam Darnold. Yeah, huge regret already. Let's talk about Sam Darnold coming back. Um, reports are that he – was suited up today, I believe, maybe practiced in a limited fashion. Uh, this is something that he probably needs to be 100% healthy in order to be on the field for, right? So this is more of a fatigue aspect. That's this, the biggest issue long-term with mono, and if anybody's ever had it, they can appreciate this comment, is that it takes a while to come back to normal. Okay. Um, so they just don't have the energy – they don't have the strength indirectly because of the energy. So physically, he should be able to perform. His risk of a splenic rupture substantially decreases after 21 days uh, from the initial date. Uh, and after about 30 days, it drops even more. That's what the data shows. But the fatigue is, is a little different for everybody. If he has the energy to get back out there, we'll see him on Sunday. If they feel like, like he, he's, he can't make his passes, he just doesn't look right, then they're going to hold him out. That that's kind of what we have. I, I like to think he's going to play. He's got a great matchup against an awful D or you know secondary. Whether or not he he has the energy to do it, it remains to be seen. Yeah, hopefully we get him back on the field because I'd love to see a little uh, Robbie Spaghetti Anderson magic over there. And this is the matchup to get it done. So if he's you know ninety percent, I hope he gets onto the field. Now, Mitch Trubisky is someone that will not be on the field in Week Five. Mm -hmm. Reportedly, um, his MRI revealed a dislocated left shoulder and mm -hmm. a slight labrum tear. Mm -hmm. Now. This is not going to require surgery. They play in London in week five. They have a bye week after that. So the fact that it's maybe it's minor, does this mean that he'll probably be back in week seven? Yeah, uh, he got really lucky in that this is not his throwing shoulder. If this is his throwing shoulder, he'd be done for the year. Really? Uh, this is essentially what the dislocation is the same that Anthony Miller had last year. Right. But the issue with it is that uh, when the throwing athlete, the labrum, so think of, uh, of the microphone head as the the tip of the, the, the proximal uh, humerus at the head of the uh, arm bone. What the labrum does is it cups it and it keeps it from dislocating uh, front back up and down. Well, what happens is if you tear it, you don't, then this thing wants to pop out with every throw. It wants to pop out. That's the issue that, that, that luck had is that he had a labral tear many years ago and they had to repair it so that whenever he throw it, it, it wouldn't pop out of his socket. This is non-surgical. This is non-throwing side. So he just got to wait for the swelling and inflammation to go down. They'll, they'll put a little um, apparatus on him that's like a brace that just tells that helps it to stay in place. And then once he's ready to rock and roll, he'll be fine a couple weeks. Okay. Um, he will be at increased risk for re-dislocating it. That is very possible. A direct correlation with age. Uh, the younger they are, the more likely are they are to, to, to re-dislocate it. Uh, anterior is much, much more common than, than posterior. But yeah, he'll have surgery in the off-season, but uh, a couple of weeks he'll be okay. Okay, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, this doesn't really impact things from a fantasy perspective too much because, one, you have Chase Daniel coming in who is obviously not – fantastic NFL quarterback by any means, but Mr. Trubisky is not a fantastic throwing quarterback by any means either. Um, and at this point, you're probably not rostering or starting Mitchell Trubisky in your lineup. So it's really not um, a big hit. So let's move over to the running back position. We have a lot of high profile names to talk about. One, Swan Barkley, right? Had the huge timetable for this sprained ankle or the high, high ankle sprain, which should take, you know, four to eight weeks or whatever. Obviously, this dude's a freak athlete. Shout out to Animal out there. He is already like 
making moves and and running on yeah. it and pull yeah. back to practice after like a week. So seeing like say you didn't know when he had done this to him, right? Say he had the high ankle sprain, but you weren't sure if it happened five weeks ago. You weren't sure if it happened five days ago. You saw the video of him doing what he was doing today, like on Twitter or whatever. How far off would you say Saquon Barkley probably is from returning? A week to two. Damn. Yeah, I mean, uh, he reminds me of Adrian Peterson when he came back from his ACL. Yeah. They just like normal timelines throw it out the window because it doesn't really seem to apply. This is traditionally a, a mild high ankle sprain at best takes a little over two weeks. That's like the mildest version of it. At worst is surgery and you're done for the year. The normal kind of run of the mill is about four weeks, sometimes closer to six. My suspicion is based on their scheduling, he's definitely going to miss this week. They have the Patriots on Thursday night next week. Then they have like 10 days off. And then they play Arizona. The Patriots isn't the best matchup. So week seven. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if they held them off to week seven. It also may depend on what, if they win, if they beat the Vikings this weekend, that may be enough for them to say, all right, let's, I mean, but this is their potential, their franchise player. It should be at least uh, him and Danny Dimes. So I think they have to be a little smart with this. You don't want him returning early, re-injuring it or, or, or worse. And then they're out for another month or even longer. So, I mean, they kind of have to be smart with this, but also semi and appreciate his freakness. Yeah, it's it's almost like, I mean, you just look at Saquon and, and you could tell just by his muscle structure, like his oh, yeah. body works at a double the pace that a normal human's he's, body works. He's, he's a beast. I mean, yeah, no so, you know, building muscle, burning fat, like recuperating cells. And when they're broken down and rebuilding themselves, it just, it works at a higher pace. So it makes sense that he would be able to come back from injuries at a higher pace, similar to a guy like, Adrian Peterson. Now, James Conner is dealing with a plethora of injuries to his lower body. He had somewhat of a little bit of a, a knee injury swell up a couple weeks ago. He ended up playing through it, didn't miss any time. He played well in, uh, in the Monday night game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Wasn't injured, it didn't seem, until he eventually limped off the field uh, with some kind of ankle injury, sprain, whatever. Came back into the game, finished the game, so it wasn't really a problem. Uh, he missed today's practice. We're filming this on Wednesday evening. This will be released Thursday, so this is the closest news that we have about James Conner. Um, Steelers coach Mike Tomlin said he is still being evaluated, and I believe he missed some practice time each of the previous weeks too. So yeah. it's possible that you know he's just getting rest, and they'll be fine for him to go forward. But now this is two lower leg injuries, two different body parts in as many weeks. So like you said, obviously he was being put at a higher re-injury risk based on the kind of knee inflammation that he dealt with a couple weeks ago. Um, are you concerned at all about this ankle or just like the the mashing of multiple injuries starting to add up a little bit? Surprisingly, I'm not overly worried about Hunter. He rolled his ankle based on reports. I, I, I had was recording a podcast towards the end of the game and it was a blowout at that point. But so I didn't get to see the exact injury. He was on his, his normal weekly uh, radio show and he said he's good to go. I'm not really worried at all. So uh, my suspicion is he'll be fine. I want him to be the same back he was last week, but finish the game strong. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what you what you thought you were getting in Connor. That's what you got in him last year. Uh, the rest of the offense doesn't look particularly look good. But uh, I'm not overly concerned about Connor. I I'm starting him in a couple of leagues that I have him this week. I, I'm not I'm not overly worried. I mean, he's at increased risk because he's got a couple things going on. But it they're lower risk things in general. Okay. Cool. Um, another running back dealing with some kind of ankle issue is Marlon Mack. Now he left week four's game in the fourth quarter, I believe, and didn't end up finishing the game. Now he was not medically ruled out, Coach Frank Reich said, after the game, but he did not practice on Wednesday. I mean, that's a little bit concerning at least because he's a guy who's handled a huge workload so far. Um, they have a very tough matchup against Kansas City. It's tough to even know what his workload was going to be like if they started trailing yeah. and, you know, uh, Naeem Hines kind of came in as a pass catcher. Yeah. And on the same side of the ball, we also have T.Y. Hilton dealing with this quad injury, which rarely ever keeps him out of the game. But he was actually, you know, yeah. tested for week four, which tells you that it was probably a little more serious than yeah. maybe they went on the previous week. Yeah. So we have two of these Colts players. We have Marlon Mack with the ankle. We have T.Y. Hilton with the quad. Any like strong conviction or any, any thoughts about these injuries? I think T.Y. will – there's a good chance he'll, he'll go. Yeah. I think it was smart to hold him out last week because these just linger. He would have left the game again with the, with the re-aggravation. I think there's a, there's probably about a 75% chance that the Hilton plays this week and, and it 
potentially really nice matchup for him as they're going to need to put up points. Uh, hell, uh, Mahomes had a monster week last week, and he didn't even have any touchdowns. As far as Mac, I'm a little more concerned about him, not from a injury so much perspective, although he does have the, the calf, which is probably not 100%, and now he's got this new ankle, which – also probably isn't hundred percent, but he will be likely able to go because it's a, it sounds like a traditional lateral ankle, which is just you run in the middle ankle sprain. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the issue I primarily have with this is the negative game script right. is that at, at what point if he re-aggravates it and then they're down two touchdowns and he can't get, continue to stay up warm because he's not going to be in the game because they're, you know, down two touchdowns and they need Heinz in. You're going to start him. You may get a couple of good quarters, but then after that, he may be done for the game. And it's like, well, whatever he gives you by that point, that's what he's going to give you. Yeah. Um, so he's coming at a more disadvantage. He has a couple of different injuries and he doesn't have the best. Uh, he has a great matchup, you know, in terms of poor defense, but he has a less than ideal game script. So uh, in DFS, there's probably other routes you go. In, in season long, you probably don't have many guys with his upside, so you might have to roll with them. Um, but it's a Sunday night game, so you kind of have to decide what to do tomorrow or, or today. Yeah. Uh, because if someone's playing when Thursday and, 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 and we don't find out until 4 or 5, 6 o'clock on, on Sunday night, you, you don't have any other options. Yeah, I mean, Naeem Hines might be pretty widely available in a lot of people's leagues. So if you are a Marlon Mack owner and he was someone that you might think about putting him in your lineup, go grab Mack. I mean, uh, Naeem Hines, if that's possible, because if Mack ends up missing the game, um, then Naeem Hines becomes obviously infinitely more valuable. Same thing with Jordan Wilkins, too. If Mack ends up not going, then Jordan Wilkins becomes a play. Um, so make sure you kind of diversify your roster there. Obviously, if T.Y. Hilton is playing, then he's going to be someone that's in my lineup because this is the game that's featuring a, a 56 and a half point over under, yeah. right now, which is the highest total on the entire slate for the weekend. So it's going to be a lot of points, going to be a lot of passing from the indie side. So uh, Hilton's a guy that you should have in your lineup if he is playing, a guy that you will be without for week five, not officially yet, but Coach Cliff Kingsbury said that Christian Kirk is unlikely to play. Now, he suffered this ankle injury towards the end of the game, and it looked pretty bad, and then he stayed on the field, and then it got worse. And then he he needed to be, like, not carried off the field, but he needed assistance Help, yeah. to limp off the field. So it kind of tells you that he re-injured it again, which was the dumbest thing that he could have possibly done. From what you've seen, I know you tweeted out a few things, obviously, that haven't come out and said anything official. From from your eyes, can you tell us what you think happened to Kirk or what's like a likely – So I, I needed – I had a lot of good stacks going with Seattle and with the Arizona offense, and I needed yeah. Kirk to go ham. So I was really watching this game closely, and he didn't really do anything in the first like three quarters or two and a half quarters. And they finally started to get him a little bit more – Yep. And then he tweaked his ankle. And then the second to last play, maybe somewhere along there, he he, he kind of landed really awkwardly on it. And, and someone was like kind of landed on it on top of him. Uh, and it looked like a high ankle is what it, it looked like. And maybe a, a little bit of a sprained uh, medial uh, MCL of his knee. They didn't say anything about knee right now. So maybe he got lucky and it just didn't bother him. But the ankle is definitely going to keep him out this week. If this is um, a super mild, uh, low or high ankle, then then he, there's a chance he can come back in a week or two. Uh, it sounds like it's not as bad as we thought it was. Kingsbury said he's pretty much out this week. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised maybe if we're revisiting this talk next week and say, yeah, there's a a good chance he'll play this week. The, the the question that remains, because this is going to be a shootout, is where do the targets go? I mean, they're starting to run out of bodies here. Yeah. Um, and, and this air raid needs a lot of bodies to function properly. Uh, so is it Bird? You know, uh, I think, and, and I'll be curious to hear what you think. Yeah, I think Bird's going to be out. I think what's going to happen is Fitz is going to get 14 targets, and then we're going to have a mixture of, like, just – horrible targets that Kyler Murray's going to have to throw to. It's going to be uh, – yeah, Bird, Bird will be out, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Sherfield. Isabella. Isabella and uh, Keyshawn Johnson. So, it's like yeah. – And then and they may use uh, DJ in the slot more, which I wouldn't mind. Yeah, um, I mean, they, yeah. they've had no success on the ground, so it would make sense for them to go yeah. completely pass heavy. Uh, I kind of like Keyshawn Johnson. I think that people are going to get excited about Andy Isabella, but only because they've heard – Understandably. It. Yeah, I mean, they've heard the name so often in the preseason – you know, he hasn't about, proven you know, anything. He hasn't showed that he can do anything in the field. Every time, you know, one of these guys gets hurt, everyone's like, oh, Andy's Bell time. And then he just literally doesn't get on the field. Like yeah, he got like two snaps or whatever. There's something going on there. Yeah. So if I had to put my money on one person, it would probably be Keyshawn Johnson because we've seen a little bit of chemistry in the preseason and early on. 
between him and Kyler Murray, but obviously I'm probably staying away from that passing game outside of Larry Fitzgerald. Now, uh, one more wide receiver I want to hit on real quick is Emmanuel Sanders. Now, if you just saw the box score, if you're just looking at news, you, you might not be aware of the injury here. I don't really even know if there was an injury, but he kind of appeared to suffer some kind of lower body injury, which he played through at the end of the game um, last week against Jacksonville. It was – I don't know what it's being ruled right now, but something looked off there. Have you seen anything about Emmanuel? Uh, I, concerned? I read quad. Uh, I haven't seen a, a solid confirmation of that. Usually later in the week, they started confirming or denying. Okay. Um, he's been, uh, he had one what, down game, I think it was week three, but the other couple of games, he's looked impressive in light of the fact that he's coming off that Achilles surgery not long ago. I, I suspect he'll probably go again. I don't even know who they're playing this week. I usually don't really pay attention in the, the Denver offense. Chargers. Much, but Chargers. Chargers. Yeah. That's, uh, but so, I mean, uh, but he's been surprisingly solid. If he's on the field, you're probably going to start him. Okay. So no, we don't, we don't know too much there. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's shown that he can stay on the field regardless of some of these Nikki tech injuries. Cause he had something a couple of weeks ago that was around, but it didn't, you know, yeah, clearly a tough dude. Uh, one more receiver that we do know something about their injury is Devontae Adams. He's dealing with his turf toe. He's going to be out for week five. How much does this injury concern you? Like, if you're a Devontae Adams owner, do you want him to rest for two, three more weeks? Or are you just like, you know, he's good enough that we'll take the risk of him re-injuring it. We want him back on the field. Because obviously, you know, this is something that we talked about a lot with A.J. Green last year and this summer dealing with the turf toe that can turn into something a lot more serious. And Adams was clearly in a lot of pain towards oh, the, yeah. the fact that he didn't even want to get back. Or obviously, he wanted to, but he didn't even try to get back onto the field. Tells you that, like, his toe was messed up. He's going to miss a little bit of time. What are your thoughts on, on the injury? Yeah, I mean, immediately when I saw him go down, I'm like, that's a turf toe right there. I think I recorded a video before the, the game came back from commercial. Like, it was that fast. Yeah. And we saw him on the sideline just – uncomfortable and then just kind of sitting there like you was obvious that Rogers needed him. Yeah. They, I think they targeted Jimmy Graham like 500 times in like four passes. Um, and it was just, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't, it wasn't pretty. You could tell that he needed his security blanket and he didn't have it. He's definitely out week five or, or he should be out week five. The uh, Celine, uh, my partner has great data to show that three weeks is the good uh, rule of thumb for turf toe. If you come back sooner than that, you're at high risk for re-injury. That three weeks seems to be the sweet spot. If you remember the AJ Green last year, he suffered this early, tried to kind of come back, didn't end up doing well, ended up re-injuring it, and that's what he had surgery on in the off season before this all whole new injury. So this can take down the best of them. So don't uh, say, oh, it's just a toe. No, 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 no. The toe is the balance center. The big toe is the balance center for your foot. This is what you use to push off. You cannot cut. You can't do anything. You are pretty much useless as a wide receiver because you can't run your routes. So you need your toe. They should sit him for at least one, ideally closer to three weeks, and then let him rock and roll when he's ready. Yeah, so the injury happened on a Thursday night. So I, I guess technically it gives him almost an extra three days tack yep. on whatever week he ends up I mean, maybe back. week seven. I'd say yeah. I don't know what their schedule looks like, but so they played Dallas. Week seven. Yeah, they played Dallas this upcoming weekend. They played Detroit on Monday Night Football the weekend after that. So that would be, you know, still pushing it, obviously, but an extra day as well. But, they, yeah. They play Oakland the Sunday after that. And if oh, they yeah, want, that's a smash spot, yeah. Yeah, if they want to bring him back for that, but they might think we don't need him because they play Kansas City the following week. So that would, that would be week yeah. eight. So, so, I mean, I think week seven, maybe because of the timing week uh, or say week six, maybe week seven, I would be surprised if he's not back yet. Definitely week eight. Uh, yeah. I think that that if they're baby in it, week eight, if they're being aggressive, they're going to do week six. And if they're being smart week seven, I think is probably the best way to look at it uh, just based on their matchups and, 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 and how they play. And, and then the question is, is Allison, is it Graham? I mean, Allison hasn't looked very good. MVS looked better, but still the, hasn't there's been. Something, there's yeah. something off with the offense. It's, I don't like the offense that Matt LaFleur is running over there. It's very slow-paced, and there's just something – Not I don't know whether it's just Aaron Rodgers is really not as good as people think he is and, and things like that, but the, I don't know. Green Bay's offense just looks really, really funky, and it's obviously having an effect on every other – uh, pass catcher in that offense. But Vonda Adams, a couple weeks, he'll be back, thankfully. Yeah, um, a couple uh, quick big hitters. 
uh, breaking news that Hunter Henry is back to individual practices just popped up on my phone right now, really? which is great news. They called this injury a tibial plateau fracture initially. That has to be an incorrect statement. There is no way that a tibial, a true tibial plateau fracture returns in less than four or five months. So this is probably a knee sprain with what we call like an avulsion. So they, the, the, the ligament tore and it pulled off of a little bit of bone. And, and technically it was from the tibial plateau. So maybe that's what they called it. But this is not a traditional tibial plateau. That's what JJ Watt had, if you remember, that was a big deal. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Henry was back in a couple of weeks. So you may want to see if someone dropped him because this kid's a beast when he's on the field. I fucking dropped him. And that's the problem is we, we didn't know. We had no idea. Yeah, so I mean, I was, in a, I was in a 10-team league, too. The, the yeah. league I dropped in was 10 teams, so it was like, well, actually, I remember recording with you and talking about it because it happened. Uh, we had the, we heard the news, like, hours after the waiver wire process, and that week I would have blown – actually, I don't know who I would have blown the money on. It would have been either Darren Waller or TJ Hawkinson, so it could have went one way or another. Um, but I believe I ended up trading for Ertz, so I got Ertz on my team now. But I might go pick up Hunter Henry in any of the leagues that he was dropped in. But speaking on Hawkinson, he was the last guy I believe that we have on the injury report, and we'll mm -hmm. touch on Tariq Kill again at the end. Um, Hawkinson dealt with, we'll just call this a death blow. He got hit real hard. Cushion, I believe his shoulders messed up. Correct. He did not end up on the injury reserve, which is obviously good news because yeah. obviously he's been a little bit disappointing statistically speaking after that first big blow-up game. But the opportunities have been there. I, I not last, last week he caught a touchdown before leaving the game. The week prior to that, he got like, three end zone targets that he couldn't haul in, but it could have been a much bigger day. So he's low key been pretty they're targeting him straight up. They're targeting him. They're using him. He's been productive for the most part. So he was a big part of that offense. Now, what, what do we know about like the injury that he's dealing with, with the shoulder on top of the concussion? We don't, the concussion should resolve in the next, in, in one to two weeks is, is pretty standard for a sports concussion. The shoulder is the question mark here. Um, you can have something as simple as a mild sprain. You can have season ending like John Ross just went to IR that we thought wasn't a big deal. And I saw the video. It wasn't, didn't look bad at all. So um, that's the problem is you, these can be without me physically examining him or the, them telling us, hey, he's dealing with this. It's hard to speculate on these. Best case scenario, I think at least two to three more weeks is, is probably a, a, a real uh, and depending on their, when their buy is and anything as well. Because, I mean, they spend a lot of capital on this, dude. They can't just uh, continue to have this injury linger and derail his career. Yeah, bad news for Hawkinson. But hopefully he'll be back in uh, yeah. a few weeks and we hear some good news out of there. Other good news that we heard today was Terry Kill was back at practice as well as uh, Damian Williams. So we'll have to take things slow uh, with him. But Terry Kill, um, you know, he obviously dealt with that very, very, very serious injury uh, yeah. with, you know, with the clavicle and whatever was going on. Right. I think that yep. number it on on our channel now obviously I, I think you're still probably siding on the uh pessimistic side of him playing like this week um and they probably need to wait another week or so just because it, it was so serious and you know this could really mess him up if he comes back too early like what are, you, are, are your thoughts changing now that he's back so quickly yeah, the mike tyson phrase everyone what is it everyone uh wants to talk smack until they get punched in the face or whatever it is yeah. that's kind of how i think of this is that he's gonna look good until he takes a big shot and and we need to see if this shoulder does anything oh if man this I want dislocates <sighs> like that is a big like so that's the problem is that they didn't repair this ligament. So this ligament had to have torn in order for it to dislocate. Uh, there's some scar tissue forming, but it's probably not ideal. It's nowhere near as strong as the original. Over time, this will this will probably solidify and he won't really have to worry about it. But that takes time and it's only been, what, three, close to four weeks maybe? I think if I was trainers without evaluating him, I'd probably say week seven would be my goal. I would want him to kind of get go through it, get some catches, make some kind of crazy body contours, and then week six would be a little more realistic. Yeah, I mean, I don't – as as someone who owns Terry Kill and I've had Sammy Watkins in my lineup like every single week except week one when he actually had his good week, I want Terry Kill back so bad, but I don't want him going out there this week because I, I have a bad feeling that if he comes back this week, something bad is going to happen. So I want him to rest a little bit more and be at full go. I also think like, you know – this might be an ignorant statement, but just the player he is, the way he catches the ball and stuff, he's a guy who, like, he's not hes not like a Mike Evans who goes up and, like, makes catches, like, in the air and moving his shoulders around all the time. He's a guy who's beating the defense deep and catching the ball in his pocket, yeah. which I don't know if that has any relevance to, like, the injury. That's, that that's to his benefit, you know. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So maybe it's, like, 
it, you know, he has a better chance of staying healthy when he does come back just because of the type of player he is and the routes he yeah. runs like that. But like, I'm, I'm really hoping he rests up and comes back at a hundred percent health in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Past differences aside, I think that uh, when he comes back, he'll be ready to rock. We just need to make sure that he stays healthy. And I think it would be in their best interest to wait at least to week six, maybe week seven. Uh, as I said, there's really only been one ever player that we know of that suffered this. And that was Danny Amendola seven years ago. So a lot of things have changed, but this is just not a very common injury, and in but it's a very serious injury. But yeah, I, I think we're probably going to revisit this next week and be dis- discussing similar comments. Okay, yeah. So uh, it says the, a lot of things have changed, but one thing that will not change is Dr. Morse back on the channel every single Thursday. If you want more exclusive access to their injury content over at the Fantasy Doctors, Make sure you head over to patreon.com slash the fantasy doctors where they have all their exclusive content. Um, No matter what injury you're looking for, the timetables, things like that, that is where you will find them. Make sure that if you enjoyed the video, you smash that thumbs up button, you subscribe to the channel. If you're new, we're doing fantasy football content five to six days a week. And uh, that's all we got for y'all today. So we will see y'all tomorrow. Peace.